different nations. Definitely he will get into the Khalid Muhammad death, mysterious death. Uh, Grassroots Productions proudly presents Brother Book, Professor Brother Booker T. Coleman dealing with the Crusades 1096 to 1492 and the history of the Moors, the precursor or Christopher Colon, a.k.a. Christopher Columbus. We should have seen them coming. This is part two. Give Brother Booker T. Coleman a black hand. Part three. Part three. Part three. Sorry, part three. Hotep, my brothers and sisters. Hotep. Salaam alaikum. It is good to be back here at Grassroots Production. And for those who may not have been there from the beginning, who may have, this may be your first time, or maybe the time that you came in January might have been your first. The key to what we're going to be discussing this afternoon, this is our third session. And when I first spoke to Brother Leon, and to Brother Yusuf, and to Brother Big Man, it, it, there was no way I could have done it in one presentation. So what I wanted to do was to stretch it out over three so that I could be very specific in what I said, and so that the words that I said, the information that I gave would be clear. But the birth of this presentation, this three-part presentation came from when I was invited to do a presentation on the Moors. And out of the Moors, one of the things that I had said was that the only way that we can understand as a people, even when we look at our brother, our, our, our beloved, dear brother, uh, Dr. Khalid Muhammad, there should be no surprise as to what we see happening around us. And if we knew and understood our history, we would have no problem understanding the position that we find ourselves in. However, to understand from what I see historically, to understand the position that we find ourselves in today in 2001, you've got to understand what happened in October of 1492. To understand what happened in October of 1492, you would have to understand what happened in January, January 2nd to be exact. 1492. But to understand what happened in 1492, you have to have a good understanding of the Crusades. And that's where the birth of these three, this three-part presentation came from. It wasn't an understanding because part of the dilemma we find ourselves in as a people, any people, will find themselves in a dilemma if they can't answer three questions. Who am I in this world? Where in this world did I come from? And how in the world did I get here? These are three questions that folk of African descent either have not been able to answer or the answer has been confused. So what we decided to do was to spend some time looking at the Crusades because it was Professor Clark, our teacher, who taught us that to understand the position we find ourselves in, to understand our history, it is important that we understand European history. And if you just want to get an understanding of how what an impact African for, and here again is something very important in terms of looking at the Moor. Because the way in which I see in research and in history that they're able to confuse the issue is when they make it appear as if being Moor is synonymous with being Muslim. Yes, there were many Moors who were Muslims, there's no question. But many Moors were Jews. There were Jews that were Christian. There were Jews that followed a comedic legacy. So that when we look at the, the word Moor means black. When you look at the Latin language, you come out of the word Moro, Maori. Even amongst the Greeks, the word Maori and Moro amongst the Romans meant black. So you're not dealing with a religious system when you're talking about the Moor. You're dealing with a, a people that happened to have moved over into Europe at a time that this faith system was being embraced. But clearly, the, the fundamental tenets of Islam are based out of an African mindset. Clearly, they come out of an African mindset, and histor history shows us this. Because whatever you see happening in history, you've got to show me the steps that led to that. It's like when we talk about the pyramids. To tell me that pyramids were born in a mind in Europe, you have to show me where you began your process of pyramid thinking in Europe. You can't show me pyramids that dot the Nile or the Happy River from the beginning to the end 
and then tell me that a people came from another continent with no exposure to this land, built these magnificent structures with no knowledge from their own land how to do it. They came to another land, did it, and then when they returned, they did not bring that dynamic educational system with them. There's something wrong with that. However, when we look at ancient Africa and we, when we look at the early cultures of the Happy or the Nile River, we can see a growth pattern occurring amongst African people that would lead from burial practices and astronomical observatory to perfecting the structures that would later lead to the perfect climate of ancient Kemet to become pyramids. You can see thousands of years of mind that takes step by step, even the mistakes made in pyramids, the mistakes travel from south to north. So even there, you mean to say that you went inside of Africa to build something you'd never built outside, built it and corrected it on your way north, but then never continued north to build it where you came from. There's something wrong with that kind of dynamism. There's something wrong with that thought process. And so the only way to do that is to understand who we are as a people and what we have done. But you've got to understand what is all of this happening all around us? Why do they treat us the way in which they, they don't treat no other group the way they treat peoples of African descent in America? It, it's important for us to understand as a people why this would happen. Who are we that they would stop us anytime we make a movement forward, anytime we want to have a business, anytime we want to take out loans? You don't see them refurbishing Chinatown. But they're in Harlem or 125th Street. I mean, they're excavating Harlem. So it's important as a people we look at our history and we look at who we are. How did we get here? When we first began this process, we said that in part one, we couldn't even start the process without first looking at ancient Kemet as a model, starting life in Africa as a model, and moving along maps, looking at us as a people and how we've grown, how we've developed ourselves. Looking at the Greeks, and the Greeks sitting at the feet of the peoples of African descent to learn this knowledge. Never learned it right, by the way. And what we're coming out to find is that Greek don't have a language. Greek is not a language. In fact, if you look at the Greek script, every script letter from alpha to omega, that's why they had a limited alphabet. See, the alpha beta was the A and the B. They had alpha to omega, but they really had no formation of a functional alphabet because they did not come with a structured language, with a grammar or a syntax. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. This is not an emotional statement I'm making. If you can take me back into Europe where they were speaking to each other in a vocalized language that had a consciousness attached to it with a cultural common sense, then I would thank you for teaching me something. But my research shows me that the Greek alphabet is the Ethiopic script. And that the reason why, see the Greeks don't have a church. The Greeks weren't Christians. They don't have a church. The first Bible was written in Greek. But they're not Christians, but they have an orthodox church. Why is the first language of the Christian church known as Gies, which is an African dialect? It has certain Semitic, which means mixtures, people coming and adding things to it from Eurasia, but it has no fundamental grounding. If you look at Russia, a brother created the Russian language because years ago, everybody in Russia was speaking French because you've got to remember the Gauls. This is why history is so important. This is what the importance of someone like Professor Clark was to us, to look at history and to understand the role that history plays, that it's a clock. It's a clock and it's a compass. We walk around, we don't realize that all these universities that are all the, that we fight to get into, right now young people are gonna be fighting to get into these universities. They don't even understand that the formulization of, a, of an elder teacher teaching a younger person came out of the mind of an African person. And by the way, it came out of the mind of an African woman because the first teacher on the planet was the woman, the African woman. So it came out of an African woman's mind to raise her family. Yet not only now do women of color or African women or women in general find it hard to get into college, they don't even realize that they were the first educators that taught the first people. Every university that exists anywhere in the world was first created. I'm talking about the ancient ones, Salamanca and um, 